Hey, thanks everybody for joining Paul in here. I'm, I'm here with Storm Chilino and uh, Mississippi's finest, uh, Wayne Withers. Um, so Wayne has been um, e extremely active as of late and has pulled and beaten quite a few very notable arm wrestlers. So we've been blessed enough to have him on. Um, Wayne, good to have you. How are you feeling? I'm good, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our pleasure. So uh, it's, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of ironic. Um, Wayne has been in the arm wrestling game for quite a bit of time, I believe, and has been pulling at, at, at an elite level for a duration of that time and somehow has found a way to kind of fly underneath the radar uh, 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 as far as some people go. Wayne is on Facebook and is on social media, but it seems like a lot of his wins uh, don't quite get the, the, the notoriety uh, that we see from other pullers. Uh, so, so Wayne, first off, let's let's start by uh, letting the folks who are tuning in get to know who you are. So, first off, where are you, where are you from? What's your height and weight, and how long have you been pulling? I've been pulling around 11 years. Uh, yeah, I think I weighed in at 300 at Mississippi State. Uh, yeah, and uh, I work as an electrician at a chicken plant refrigeration. Uh, okay. So how tall are you? That was the one I missed out on. That's what you asked. Yeah, <laughs> six foot six. <laughs> six foot six. I would have guessed six seven. I met we we had the blessing of meeting you in person uh, in Scranton not too long ago, and you looked every bit of six foot seven with a hand to match it. Yeah, he came up there and pretty much walked through the whole tournament. I don't think anyone slowed him down the whole time. That's when I first found out about you, and I, man, I was impressed. Right. When I saw and, you handle Sean Latimer, Bill Ronkel, and everybody, I was like, holy crap, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> yeah, I had trained up pretty hard for that one. And, uh, well, I think about two months before that, I qualified for the Worlds. And not long after that, I was planning to go to the Worlds. Not long after that, I seen the advertisement for the Buffalo Wild Wings WAL tournament. And I said, you know, if they're willing to give me a spot on the show, that would be more my speed. That would be something I'd be more interested in. So I, I kind of turned my attention to that. And I'm proud it worked out like it did. I was working the weekend of the Wisconsin tournament. And I, I told my boss, I need a couple of days off to fly to Wisconsin. And, and he didn't agree. You know, he said, no, you know, just wait till your week off. I work a week on and a week off. And uh, so I said, well, that's fine. I'll just go to Pennsylvania. So I'm proud I did because I... Had a little bit of competition, I think, up that way. You know, I didn't really know none of the guys in Wisconsin, you know. But uh, I had wanted to pull Latimer and Bill and all them guys for a while, so it worked out good for me, you know. Now, yeah. was Latimer and Bill your main focus leading to that tournament, or was there anybody else that you were, uh, you know, contemplating showing up that you were kind of training for or studying? No, I mean, I, I really had... No idea who was going to be there. I knew I, I said I was coming, and, and Bill liked it. So I said, well, he might show up. I didn't have no idea that Sean was coming or anybody else who was going to be there. I just, I hadn't seen a lot of advertisement on it, you know, on Facebook. Just uh, none of my guys in Mississippi was talking about going, and nobody down south was talking about it. I was thinking, you know, this was right up my alley, something I wanted to do. So, you know, I... I was I was planning full force, you know, <laughs> uh, whoever was there. But I knew you guys was coming, you know. But I, the guys in the WL wasn't going to pull; they were just going to be there. And that gave me a shot. <laughs> you know, I think the good news is is nobody knew you were coming either. Yeah, <laughs> so I think uh, you know. Uh, Sean Sean Latimer and Jim Bryan. I, I don't think that they had any idea you were going to be there. Right, right, yeah. You know, I, I had met Jim at my very first tournament, which was in 2009, I believe, at Arkansas the Nationals. The very, very first tournament was the Nationals. I guess that's the way to jump out there and get in it. So. <laughs> of course, I went to and out, but I, I remember Jim being there. And uh, he had obviously been pulling a lot longer than me because, you know, he seen, you know, that he was seasoned at it, but. I hadn't seen him in any other tournament since then, so it's been a long time. But I don't think he remembered me. Uh, yeah, I got I got it handed to me pretty good that day, <laughs> and uh, they told me a fake tournament would be more my style, you know. Right. So I, 
New Mexico about a month later to the New Mexico States and won the amateurs and got beat in the pros again. And it was like that for years. I mean, it just was, it wasn't all the social media for arm wrestling back then. It was just, uh, you know, Northeast message board, things like that. You didn't see Bajant and Todd and all them guys on Facebook. I mean, you never, you never heard from them whatsoever. So, so how'd you get so how'd you get started or find out about the Northeast Message Board or like what brought you into it? Well, I, I was pulling Lyle's contract truck and, and uh, I was kind of down on my luck. I, I took a job. The lighting business got real bad. I took a job at a gas station changing oil. And uh, down on my luck, I thought I was because the, the guy that owned the gas station, he also owned the gym. And one Friday, uh, he... He sent me over there to get my check. He said, you need to come by the gym and pick your check up. So I did, and right out the corner of my eye, I seen a, a sign that said, you know, if you think you're tough, come on down. We're going to have an arm wrestling tournament in a couple of weeks. And I said, well, that's right up my alley. You know, I, I used to kick everybody's ass in arm wrestling, so I'll go, I'll go do it. Man. And, of course, I beat everybody there, and I said, well, you know, look, if they're doing this here, they got to be doing it in other places, too, so... That's when I got introduced to it on the internet, and the first tournament I seen was the Nationals in Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, we drove out there, and of course got beat, and got beat many times after that, <laughs> but yeah, my dad was kind of like the local strong man, he, he was short lot, short truck logger, mechanic, real strong, you know, and he was kind of the local bar hop on my so he beat everybody, so... I guess I kind of took after my dad wanting to get into strength and stuff like that, but I, I took it a little to the next level, I guess you'd say, over him. He never did go to any tournaments or anything, but that's where it all originated from. Yeah. Nice. So, and, and that's, that's good background. That's good background information, good backstory. It's, that, that's interesting how you got into it and, you know, you know the process of, of actually becoming probably one of the best in, in, in uh, North America as a whole. Um, so with that being said, uh, I don't know how many people that are tuned in right now know about your recent wins. Um, so I'm going to let you kind of talk your way through them. Obviously, the, the, the flagship win uh, came very recently against Matt Mask. Um, so why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll get into some of the other uh, elite pullers that, that you've beaten recently. Yeah, with Matt, uh, I just ch kind of changed everything. I didn't have it. I knew I was strong when I went to Pennsylvania a few months ago, but uh, I knew I had to take it to another level, so I changed my diet up and, you know, I ate a lot of greens and a lot of rice and stuff. Didn't eat a lot of meat, which I know a lot of people says it's, that's good for building strength, but I would disagree because it's more, you know, more sort of recycled protein uh, where you get, you know, a better version of it out of greens and stuff. So I, I changed my diet around to that. And uh, instead of going like an hour a day to the gym, four days a week, I, I took it to three to four hours a day. And it was a real fine line between, you know, getting hurt or getting stronger. I had to actually go to the chiropractor a couple of times. And I told Matt by text, you know, look, if I don't hurt my back where I can walk, I'm going to try to beat you. You know, and he said, well, I don't want to hear no excuses. And I'm thinking, well, you know, you got to beat me before I'm going to make an excuse if I make one. But, you know, I had trained myself sick. I mean, I, I was relaxed the day of the tournament. I, I couldn't, I knew that I couldn't have did any more than what I did to prepare, you know, so I was just calm. I wasn't nervous at all. I said, you know, this guy's going to have to be strong if he beats me because I I had trained my wrist so much that, you know, it was actually my fingers was really hurting. I couldn't hardly close my fingers, you know, my third and fourth finger because just so much wrist training up, leading up to the tournament, you know. I, I think I took like 11 days off before the tournament just to try to heal up real good. And I felt real good and, you know, had some whiskey the night before and added some beer to it to play the tournament. And I was feeling pretty good when I got up. That's one I didn't trip on something. <laughs> I, I was in no pain. But luckily, it didn't hurt my strength, you know. <laughs> A few cans of courage, I guess you'd say. <laughs> right. I'm with you. <laughs> so how'd the match go? Oh, uh, set up with him and I immediately, you know, I got a big hand and everybody says, you know, you do better with a big hand out of the strap, but not me. I feel a lot more confident in the strap. I feel like I know how to work the strap real good, you know, a lot of tricks to it. And uh, 
I wanted a strap, but I knew he was going to be fast, but I was able to slip away from him real easy, which let me know that I could match his power because if he could overpower me, he, he you know, I couldn't have got away from him. So when I was able to, to get away from him real easy, if you go back and look at the match, you'll see a smile on my face. I said, yeah, I got this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the match, the first match, uh, he slowed me down just a little bit before the pin. Uh, second match, you know, of course, I got the buckle. We swapped sides of the table, you know. And I felt, you know, that he got up over me a little bit, so he was able to take my hand. But, you know, luckily I was able to stop him. We had a pretty good match at the time. But third match, I think that he was just out of gas, you know, and good for me because I was getting that way too. That second match was a pretty good war, you know. <laughs> but uh, it definitely didn't go like I thought it was going to go. I figured if I got a win, it would be more like Jerry Carrot, you know, blood running out my nose and all that, you know, with training, red face. But, uh, no, I, I wasn't expecting it to go like it did for sure. You know, uh, good for me, it did. It was it was, it was, was a good match, you know, on, on my side. <laughs> and lucky enough, too, you know, to get the, for him to get the buckle first and third match, that probably helped me out a lot, too. But, you know, it was what, was what it was, you know. Right. Now, other than Matt Mask, uh, who are some other big names that you've competed against and had wins on or, you know, had good matches with? Well, a couple of those guys up your way that, you know, Latimer and Bill Runkle, you know, and uh, over the years, I've pulled just about everybody that was real good in the South. You know, a lot of the videos that I got, uh, I look back on, you know, there's some guys that's real, real strong guys down here, you know. Larry Alexi from Louisiana, you know, Glenn Brooks, he used to just kill me for the first few years I started. You know, he was just pretty much unbeatable. And two-time world champion from, uh, I mean, yeah, he's, he won the Worlds, I think, in Italy in 2000, 2001, actually beat Michael Todd over there. But a lot of people don't know about him either. But there's just a lot of good guys down here in the South that, that people don't pull all the time. They don't really travel. And I've, I've, there's guys in Tennessee, uh, take for instance, you know, Kent Shepard, almost unbeatable at 242 pounds. I mean, he's just super strong guy. Uh, I think BJ got a win on him uh, last year, maybe the year before that he showed up. And uh, but he's just he's just unbelievable strong. There's some real good pullers down here. Uh, I've. Let's see, I, I was telling him earlier, I think the last guy to top roll me was when Travis Bajant won the Worlds in 2016. I was one of the 24 competitor, competitors in the country, and uh, he, he, he was real strong at that. He was able to top roll me, but not a lot of guys go up high with me. Uh, everybody tries, I, I'm usually trying to defend the hook or defend the press or something like that. So I knew pulling Matt that that was something I was going to have an advantage on. I knew Matt was going to try to go up high with him, try to top roll, and very few people can top roll me, you know, so it, it worked out real good for me. And, uh, I would like to pull, you know, a good top roller, you know, all the time. You know, if I get the chance, I'd like to pull Barboza, you know. I think me and him would match it real good. He's a real person, top roller like me. But over the years, oh, I, I wouldn't know. By name, I, I pulled so many good pullers, you know, and, and got got some good wins on them, you know. So some of the ones I've been thinking about recently um, are Paul Passmore. He's extremely, he's on fire right now. He's beating everybody. And I, 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 how have you fared against him? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do that pay-per-view if we pull again. There's a lot of people. <laughs> I beat Paul the last Let's see. I think it was at Alabama State in February. It was one of the most stacked classes I'd ever seen. I mean, we had the Kentucky State champion guy from Florida. We had a lot of people in the Supers. It was real good. I think me and Paul met round three, and uh, I got to win on him. I got the top roll on him. Uh, I definitely don't want to go on a hook with him, but he don't want to go outside with me. So I guess it would just be, you know, who gets to their move the quickest, you know. But, uh, yeah, me and Paul, we've had several wars. You know, we've had several fights, so. Uh, yeah, Paul, he's, me and him started, I think, peaking around the same time, you know. Uh, didn't nobody really know him that good. Didn't nobody really know me, but we, we both started training up. We started coming, you know, to part about the same time, yeah. Now, what part I'm sorry? No, you finish. 
I'll just say, you know, I'm sure it'll be interesting when we meet again. I'm sure we'll meet again. We're both from the South. You know, we go to about the same places. We just hadn't pulled since February, you know. Yeah. Now, as far as WAL competitors go, would Barbosa be your ideal next match? Or is there any other ones that you have your eyes on? Or Yeah, I'm thinking him or Nick Zena or uh, I'd love to pull Dave Chafee. I think that uh, it, though, if they told me I had to pull Dave, that that would just make me train that much harder. So say if I had five months, and you know, I think the new season don't start to March. So give or take five months, I would just, if I was training four hours a day for Matt, I'd just go to six or eight. You know, I'd take a leave of absence from work or whatever I had to do. You know, my, my job is pretty flexible. And I don't I don't plan on getting beat. You know, if I get the chance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. You know, <laughs> it don't really matter who they put me up against. I'm going to train hard, you know. Yeah. Right. I know uh, I know Mississippi and, and down the area that you're from is uh, notorious for tons of super heavyweights. I think Gabby was talking about it recently. Like it's like everybody who you train with is, is <laughs> over 275 pounds, but you guys are loaded down there and you're loaded with talent. Um, and we, we talked about Paul Passmore, but I think you got some training partners down there who are who are at that elite level, too. In, in B.J. Fukakis, um, I know you pulled Han- Herman Stevens, uh, Robbie Burnett in Texas. So how have you done against those guys? Well, those guys ain't really that cool. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no them, them guys are all good arm wrestlers. And the funny thing is, is I was a long ranger in Mississippi for years. I was the only one that competed, traveled or whatsoever. Uh, for the first five years, it was me. And... I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do a tournament and see what happens, you know. And I, I, I lost a lot of money doing it, but a lot of guys showed up. And Ranch Clayton was the first guy. He's the oldest arm wrestler in Mississippi behind me. He come from North, up North Mississippi, and uh, went long. Bo Kirby got up with me, and he wanted to do some tournaments. And I said, you know, that's fine because I just want to arm wrestle. So he started some in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> Brad Mann and BJ and all of them come out to woodwork. And now they're having huge practices down south where BJ and Sean Hancock is from. And Rant has big practices up north. And I'm here still all alone in central Mississippi. So if I go to a practice, it's two and a half hours either way from me. So I just don't practice a lot, you know. And like I was telling you earlier, if I throw a practice, you know, 25 guys are coming. And one by one, I get a text saying that they had something come up. So I'm sitting here. All the beer and all the chips just by myself, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't go to a lot of practices, you know. I just, I go to the gym a lot. You know, I just figured, I find out that's a lot better for my elbow and I can train, you know, three or four days a week and just do a lot. I do a lot better that way. You know, I'm, I'm assuming these guys like Passmore that's real good hook pullers, you know, they, they want to practice, you know, because they want to go in that deep hook. But I just don't, I don't pull like that when I go to a practice. These guys are trying to get me in a hook and yank on my arm and everything. So, yeah, I, I usually end up leaving, cussing, putting Ben Gay on my arm and saying I'll never go to another practice every time. <laughs> I can appreciate what you're saying because every time me and Paul practice, same thing. I'm trying to top roll. He's trying to hook. So, <laughs> <laughs> nah, Come on now. I try to top roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I know what you're saying, Wayne. I mean, I'm Storm and I travel about two, two and a half hours to practice. Um, and I know what you're, what you're saying, too, about hosting them yourself. And I think, Storm, you, you, you hosted them early on and everything, too. And, and I, I, I identify with, you, with, with what you're saying. I think once you get dug into the sport, sometimes less is more, unless you're preparing specifically. You know, I feel like arm wrestling – practice and, and, and training can be more like actual resistance training. And I think that's some things that we're, we're starting to delve into now. But, um, but yeah, um, and then we talked about, we talked about, uh, you know, a little bit earlier about the WAL. And I know you participated a little bit uh, in the early years, right? What, what, what was your experience with the WAL? Well, in 2016, I asked them what they had to do and, to get there, so you got to win a state tournament, and I said, okay, no problem, and uh, you got to go to Dallas and come in top 12 in the South, and what they was calling the South was like from California to West Virginia down, 
the north. I said, oh, man, I ain't got a chance. So right around that time, Ken Blackman uh, was, was doing real good in arm wrestling from Texas. And I think he used to play uh, offense for the Buccaneers and the Bengals back in early 2000. Big guy, man, like six foot eight, three sixty five. So I get there, and you know, Bajan said and everything. He he, uh, I think he won the whole thing that day. But Nick Zena was my first match, and uh, he took me out, and they never called my name again. Ran the whole tournament out, never called my name. So I'm like, what the hell? You know, I got with Bajan. I said, man, I, I only lost one match. Yeah, well, he walked with me away to the stage, and oh no, that guy beat you. I was like, no, no, I haven't been back on the table. He's like, well, you see that guy right there. He said, that's Ken Blackman. He come in ninth place. He said, let's see how you do against him. And me and him had already talked to each other on Facebook back and forth. I told him I was going to get him and this and that. But, yeah, I, I got him that day. And I, the guy come over there, and I think it was the president of WL. He come over there and stuck 150 bucks in my pocket. He said, that was pretty impressive. He said, I'll put you up against the Louisiana State champ. And if you beat him, that'll put you in seventh place. So they put me against him, and I beat him, and I don't think I pulled another match. And uh, I, I put me in seventh place, and I went on to the Worlds in Vegas. And uh, uh, I think I, had, well, I was having a little too much fun up there. But like I said, I wasn't really as strong as I am right now. But uh, I think I had like a 12-pack of straight Budweiser before I got on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday morning too, that's bad, but yeah, uh, I pulled a guy, I think out of Arizona and got a win on him, might have got a win on somebody else, and then Bajor got me, and uh, I got an award with this guy from Canada, I can't even recall his name, but if, that would have put me in the finals if I would have beat him, but that's where I ended up at, at the Worlds in 2016, you know, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my experience with the WAL so far, but until I come to Pennsylvania, you know, a few months ago. So, uh, so as far as training goes, uh, you touched on that a little bit. I know um, we had talked in the past, and you talked about you know starting out doing a lot of table time. So, what have you kind of what have you settled on as far as what your your approach is to training and preparing and lifting? I go straight into the gym, and you know a lot of guys warm up, but I, I don't. I mean, I just go to straight heavy heavy weight. What happened was for the for a few years. I was state champion, and I could hold my own in the South. But I said, you know, what if I go to this tournament and this guy shows up? Or what if I go to this tournament and this guy shows up? I said, you know, I'm going to come in second or third, you know, my best. I said, well, i got to start training to be that guy. <laughs> I'm taught of training to be the guy that comes in second and third. So you always, you've always you always been taught all your life that, you know, do whatever you're comfortable with, set of 10 reps or set of 15 reps. I said, well, you know, these guys that I'm going against, they're hitting me with everything they got, boom, right off the bat, you know. We're not sitting up there going 50%, you know, 10 times back and forth. So that's how I started training at the gym. Wherever I was doing comfortable 10 times, I started doing what I was comfortable with two times. So if I could do 100 on the bat row 10 times, I started doing 150 on the bat row two times. And it was like overnight. It was, it was real quick that the... What I was doing two times, I was able to do ten times. I just got a lot stronger, seemed like within a month, training that way. And that's where I really started getting a lot better at arm wrestling was the way I changed around my routine to gym. And basically, I just do a lot of wrists. Like, I'll, I'll get the cable pulled down, pulled down to my waist, and, you know, just sit there and, and wrist curl, I'll do a lot of that. I do a lot of wrist rolls with the bands on the 45-pound bar. Uh... I do a lot of reverse wrist curls and basically just a lot of back pressure. You seated rows or, or bent over rows and I'll do a lot of concentration curls. That's that's my routine, just around and round and round for hours. You know, I don't do, well, they say a lot of these guys are using the tiles and stuff like that. I don't, I don't do that. You know, it's just, and I, I don't do a lot of thick grips. Uh, I do a lot of small grips. The only thing I really do with a, a thick handle, maybe some of my seated back rows or some of my side pressure, but, you know, I like it to where I feel like I've got a real, it seems like I can do a lot better wrist curl with a small handle. 
you know, I can I can do, really dig in and do a deep wrist curl that way. But a lot of times I'm not trying to, it's not the amount of wrist curls I do, it's trying to, to squeeze in and hold for a long time and really get in deep, and it really makes my wrist feel a lot stronger that way, you know. That's basically my routine, you know. Now, any, any like, general, like, are you focused on any of the, like, core lifts as well for, like, total body strength, or are you keeping it really arm wrestling specific? Specific arm wrestling. I don't bench or do anything like that. I mean, I got under a bench maybe two months ago just to see what I could do. That was the first time I've been under a bench in, like, 14 years. I don't do no squats or nothing like that. or just all, you know, upper body, back, wrist, form, hand, that's it. I don't, I don't do nothing else, you know, but I, I concentrate on that three or four days a week, the same muscles, you know. Uh, I used to be a member of a gym when I lived in another area that had a Olympic-sized swimming pool, so I was able to, I would try to swim about 30 minutes to an hour after my workout just to loosen up the muscles real good. It was real good the next day. But now, I don't as, far as, your, as far as your 11-year process through the sport and what you've learned along the way, what would you tell a new arm wrestler? Um, in your opinion, would be the best approach for um, for just training specifically for the sport? I'd say go to a few practices and uh, learn your technique, learn a good top roll. That's what I preach by is top rolling. And then just go to the gym and get strong. You know, go to go to several practices, you know, learn what you, but don't hurt yourself, you know, because a lot of these new guys, They'll go to a practice and they'll get in a deep foot with somebody and they got to go to the emergency room the next day and they're like, man, screw arm wrestling, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've hurt myself several times mm-hmm. doing it. I'm, I'm bullheaded, but <laughs> I finally learned, you know, <laughs> to stay away from them. You know, I, I hate to talk down on practices, you know, but I, that's why I tell all the guys just getting into it. Uh, you know, if they ask my advice is just go to practice, you know, work on technique, light pulls, you know, and then go to the gym and get strong, you know. Now, I know you said your dad was a local strongman. Given your size, were you into basketball, football? I mean, did you do any sports before arm wrestling? You're talking to a guy that's never even been to high school before. I got a <laughs> degree in uh, electrical technology, a two-year associate's degree, but I went back to school later in life. When I was 13 years old, I started working full time, saw boots and all, running chainsaws in the woods with my dad. And it was, I mean, it was done, don't get me wrong, I'm not that old where you could just quit school whenever you wanted to, but, you know, it was kind of a thing that worked out with homeschool, but I mean, it didn't go through, you know. I mean, I did a little while and I quit, but I, I was out there with my dad. And the time I was 15, I could I could beat him or any other grown man in the county arm wrestling because I would pull against my dad almost nightly, you know, just around the house because. I love the arm wrestle, and he did too, but yeah, running chainsaws worked my wrist real good, and all the skitters in the woods and stuff like that, but yeah, I, that's something I regret now looking back. I wish I would have played some basketball or football or something. I, I didn't really get interested in that stuff till I got older, you know, sitting around the couch, drinking beer, watching games. I'm like, man, I would have been pretty good at that. I could knock the hell out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. I, I mean, I just would have thought, I mean, you never know. And that's why you got to ask these type of questions because you see somebody who's six foot six, six foot seven. I mean, you look like you could be playing for uh, for an NFL team right now as a left tackle. <laughs> Man, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I went to college later in life. I've only been out of college about two years. I went full time for two years at a community college. But I was thinking, though, know, asking that guy, you know, hey, I, I, I didn't think it'd be real fair. There was me out there for a bunch of 17-year-old kids. <laughs> Somebody in the hospital, you know, so I said, maybe I shouldn't ask about joining the team, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 39. Oh, so you're just, you're still, you're not too bad. I mean, you only got a year on me. I, I like to look at myself as older, but the reality of it is in this sport, that gives that gives us plenty of time. I mean, you got it going on. You got the hair and the, the you know, you, you ain't going bald like me. And I, I mean, everybody talks about my beard. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. I'm receding. <laughs> it's like uh, two-tone now, getting gray on the bottom and losing it up top. Now, that's why I wear the beanie all the time, man, just to cover that. <laughs> 
I'm right with you, buddy. I'm right with you. We got a lot of good years left in there, though, you know? I mean, you can arm wrestle. You can you can be elite in this sport for so long. I mean, you, you got guys like Hutchings proving it every day. Yeah, I think Cushions didn't get started. He was in his late 30s, and I know John Brzee won the WL over Devin Lorette when he was like 50, a few, like in 2015. But yeah, right. give me look forward to, you know. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. So, um, anything like anything else uh, about about you or uh, arm wrestling in the South that kind of differs from what you saw up here in the North? Oh. Everybody says that the South's got a lot of talent, you know, but I mean, there were, there were some strong guys up there that day. Uh, I think I was just uh, on a different level that day and just plow right through everybody. I mean, I, probably because I had to fly <laughs> and I had a long trip and I just wasn't going to take a loss, I guess. And these guys just got in their car and drove up there, you know, that's probably had a lot to do with it. But yeah, I see a lot of talent up north. Of course, you got Chafee and all, and well, you got cataract just right across the river over there you know there's a lot of good pullers up there all the way you know for sure uh i don't know maybe we do probably do a lot more tournaments in the south uh, i noticed that we got them like every other weekend down here unless you guys are just hiding them from me i ain't posting them to me <laughs> no, we got them we got them we, they're just not all as big as you, you guys seem to for the most part when i look at most of the tournaments you seem to get a pretty big turnout and a really deep pro turnout um, I think a lot of the tournaments up here, um, the sport's growing big time in the Northeast. So we have a ton of amateurs, um, which is good, which is a great thing. But I think sometimes certain ones of those pro classes aren't quite as deep as what you guys are seeing down south. But uh, I think if we give it a couple years, these amateurs are going to turn into pros and those classes are going to be really deep. Um, but yeah, I noticed, like I said, I noticed paying attention to what you guys are doing down there. Some of the promotions that Sean Hancock's putting on and everything, are, they're looking awesome. They're doing a wonderful job, you know. I I couldn't ask for nothing no better. Sean, Brad, Man, and Rance, and all them guys, and BJ, they they're just they're taking it to the next level for sure. You know, that was probably the biggest state tournament I had ever seen by far in Mississippi State this year. You know, we had a few weeks ago. It was it was just amazing the way they ran it. It was real good. And the one I went to this past weekend at a Tupelo that Rance had was a real good tournament. You know, they had the energy and all of the. The Nationals, you know, it was a great tournament. So when, when we go up his way up north, you know, you get a lot of the Tennessee pullers come in. And uh, down south, we get a lot of Louisiana, Alabama guys come in, you know. And then, you know, of course, Glenn Brooks does Alabama State every year. is a real good tournament. And, you know, Michael Todd out in Arkansas. Yeah, we got a lot of, there's no excuse to not find a tournament in the south, that's for sure, you know. Yeah, the talent, I think it's, it's spread around the U.S. about equally, you know. Right. Yeah. So, Storm, do you have anything else you want to you wanna really uh, ask Wayne about? Because um, I think we, we've been on for a good little minute now. We've got probably one or two more questions. Um, well, so obviously when you came into arm wrestling, you kind of had to find your own. But as far as strength, would you say you came in kind of genetically a little bit ahead from logging? Or do you think you just genetically always had strength growing up? Like, Or do you think you developed your strength through that 10 years, 11 years of actually arm wrestling? I think probably my hand size and my hand strength bailed me out of a lot of matches when I didn't really know what I was doing, you know. Uh, I remember I ordered a set of a heavy grip 300s. And they said, you know, on, on the advertisement, if, if you can close a 250, you can crush a man's hand. And if you can close a 300, we don't want to shake your hand. <laughs> so I ordered a 250 and a 300. And I said, well, it probably take me six or eight months to close that 300. And uh, I was closing the 350 right out of the box. And I think after like three days, I was closing the 300-pound grip. And that was years ago, you know. And I, I don't even mess with them things anymore. You know, I don't, I don't use no grippers or anything. I just... Concentrate mostly on my wrist and back pressure, but yeah, I always had a real strong hand. Probably come a lot from the logging, you know. And my, I noticed my left was stronger than my right when I first started. And I tore my right in San Antonio in a tournament about eight years ago, and it's never really healed back up. So, like right, when I went, when I pulled in Tupelo Saturday and won the overall left, that was the first time I pulled left in over a year. But I trained it just as hard as I did my right, but it just 
my right's at least 50 times stronger for some reason. I, I don't know if I tore something, it's just not right, you know. But my right's a lot stronger than my left. That's why I don't pull a lot with it, you know. I think Passmore's right backwards. You know, his, his left is so dominant, you know, his, his right, you know, it's right there, though, but my left's just, it's not there. <laughs> Everybody says it's strong, but uh, like BJ always tells me, you know, well, you just say, you just think your left ain't good because your right's so good. He said, that's why you're not putting a left, but, uh, but uh, it's something that's just not right about it. Like, uh, it's real tender right now after that tournament. I don't want to pick up nothing or anything. <laughs> you know, I can tell it's just something not right in there, you know. But yeah, I think I think my hand bailed me out a lot when I first started. You know, it was just an ungodly huge hand. <laughs> <laughs> we know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't think uh, I think you know if uh, if everybody tracked your career as closely you know as as they should and, and knew the wins and the and the level that you're on right now, I think you'd probably be getting quite a bit more notoriety that you, you probably deserve. Um, so I know you did win that Buffalo Wild Wings tournament. It was awesome watching you. Um, I know you have a, some aspirations for the WAL. So I know you also mentioned several names that you would be interested in pulling. So, if, you know, if you could reach out there, hopefully maybe somebody sees this who might have some sway or might think of a good match. Um, who, who would be the number one guy that you would want to be able to pull in the WAL if you were given an option? This is wish list type thing. Who, who would be the best one? First off, who would be who would be the the one that you would most likely to get a win on, or most likely most like to get a win on, and who do you think would be the most realistic opening match? I think realistically, they'll probably put me up with somebody like Zena, uh, because I think a lot of people have requested that match because I, I watched a lot of the comments and read a lot of the comments on on the on TV and a lot of people was wanting to see me pull Nick Zena. So realistically, I think that's what's going to happen. But if I had my wish, I, I, I want to pull Dave Chafee because I want to get thrown to the wheels right away. And that's just going to make me that much stronger. I'm going to pull that much harder. Uh, he's a real nice guy. I've talked to him on Facebook some, you know, and I, I think I can take him. So <laughs> let's see. You know, I just have to, have to train hard, you know, I, and I know I will, you know, but, uh, that's who I would really like to pull today, Chase. Yeah. Get a few months to train for him. And yeah, I think I can shock the world again. You know, <laughs> no problem. Storm, do you have anything else? Any, any last questions for, uh, for Wayne? Nope. That'll, that'll wrap it up for me. <laughs> All right, Wayne, it was an absolute pleasure having you on. I'm really hoping that some people, uh, take an opportunity to look at this video and, uh, really ponder, the achievements that you've had, especially most recently. Uh, not only not only are you a good dude, uh, but you're you're a, a heck of a beast, and I believe a formidable challenger for just about anyone in North America and and quite a few across the world. So it's been our absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you, and hopefully we'll have you on again down the road. Thanks, guys. I'll be looking forward to it. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, uh, hit like, and go ahead and turn those notifications on.